Okay, we got some fun to talk about here today with some Crusader Kings 3 developer diaries. Um, we finally have gotten a little bit of a glimpse of what your Royal Court is going to look like in the Royal Court DLC. And this kind of goes over the artifact system that's going to be added into the game. Um, if you haven't been keeping up to date with Royal Court, there will be a whole artifact system that will be added into the game as well as an inventory for your character. You have this actual court in and of itself, this, this actual room that you can adorn with artifacts and banners and you can have individuals of your family uh, kind of snooping about and stuff like that so the royal court dlc aims to add a lot of fun and flavor to the game needless to say a ton of stuff to some of the things with culture and divergent cultures and the such that we've covered in previous videos but in my kind of um, approach of upfronting the knowledge in this video what we're going to be going over today is essentially some of the artifacts that they've teased in the newest developer diary and to give you a little context on those uh, actual artifacts. We're going to talk about the previous developer diary and go into how inspirations work and how inspirations allow your character to uh, get these high quality artifacts to put into your royal court. Now, the cool thing too about this is that those, those artifacts will be in varying degrees of quality and they'll kind of progress much like schemes do. But that really is the down and dirty of what we're gonna be going over today. If that's all you wanted to know, feel free to shut the video down if you so wish. But for those who really wanna get down and dirty with this and have some fun talking about some developer diaries because I'm so stoked on royal court. I, I, I wanna jump back into Crusader Kings 3, but I think that for myself and a lot of people, <clears throat> You've noticed that once you kind of learn the game, it, it becomes a little too easy. Because if you compare this to Crusader Kings 2, Crusader Kings 2 has got so many um, DLCs and free updates that have been tacked onto it to just make so much more content. Crusader Kings 3 has only been out a full year as of next month. So there's still a lot to be added to the game. And as a result, you kind of hit a point where you go, okay, well, I've kind of done everything and everything's kind of easy. And if you're at that point, don't worry. I've got a video coming out that's going to uh, help you make your playthroughs more exciting. Let's go into these developer diaries here, starting with artifacts. And this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to be pretty much showing off what they've done here with this developer diary. And we can finally see a little bit of how these actual artifacts are going to look in the game and, and where they kind of get their inspiration from, right? Here we get a Pratiharan volume about revelry, um, a thinner codex of sorts, a, a reliquary containing a piece of the crown of thorns, you think, which maybe makes me believe that there's probably going to be some sort of maybe counterfeit system or something of the sort when it comes to your actual artifacts. Like, hey, can multiple artifacts exist, but one is the actual quote unquote true version of it? Like, hey, this is the actual true crown of thorns that Jesus Christ wore. Here's the actual spear of destiny, so on and so forth. So I wonder if that system will be incorporated into the artifact system and it will have some sort of effect like, hey, you can actually make a claim against someone's artifact or, or you can you can insult them by saying that's a fake artifact here's mine as proof so i wonder if we'll be getting something like that and of course i'm extrapolating off of two words so that's baseless speculation right there so <laughs> take that with a grain of salt next we have a fine urn taken from the abbasid court and again you can see a, a character standing in the background there you can see a lot of the detail work too in the background of these images right you can see how these royal courts might work like maybe this is a specific style of court has a specific uh, or maybe a certain level of grandeur means okay hey you know you're pretty lowly on the court system here just some simple wood for you no wall treatments but as you maybe progress in grandeur you get some nice floral rugs some nice tiles with gold inlays and i, I would be i would not be surprised if that's kind of how your court appearance evolves based off of your grandeur because a lot of things uh, are seemingly tied to grandeur and we've talked a little bit about that how it's essentially like a scale system for how magnificent your court is it's almost like the prestige for your character the higher grandeur the more you're going to attract um, people to your court who want to take part in it and people that are inspired which we'll get into in just a little bit here we have a chest of valuables made in the finest of ivory. Um, but after this point, they pretty much go into, or Paradox goes into like, hey, here's where the inspiration kind of comes from. Like this, this chest here, here's the actual ones that we've seen from archaeological evidence. So you can see a lot of these right here and how they represent a lot of what's actually going to be in the game. So you get a really cool idea of where this comes from. And even when they go into other sorts of iconography, when they're talking about, hey, you know, in Europe, there's plenty of statues of people, but not as uh, uh, prevalent in the Middle East, very sparse. So they use more 
stuff like Islamic golden falcons, uh, stuff like that to kind of get the same overall um, effect that the marble statues do, I guess, for whatever game reasons, to try and give it a representation in Middle Eastern culture because there's not as many um, statues of people and so on and so forth. So a really cool little bit on how they extrapolate that out. Um, but also, too, was saying how <clears throat> the artifacts that we have in modern day have been around for 800 some odd years, right? They're saying right here, <clears throat> and apologies, uh, my allergies are killing me. Since reference from today could be a could be of a possibly 800 years or more old object. Uh, so all the ones we see in the game will kind of be restored digitally, which is kind of a really cool touch if you're really into history and know a lot of these artifacts by, by name or by heart. You can say, hey, you know, it's cool to actually see this brought to life yet again. Now, the big thing here, though, is the dynamic objects, and this is going into how banners and coats of arms will work and how you will be able to select banners that will be on display in your royal court. <clears throat> And those will also be dynamic in and of themselves, right? To show off that heraldry. And this little guy right here, little, little ducky poo, right? Uh, that's not a duck. That's a, that's a goose. Is it a duck? I don't know. I'm in Southern California. We don't have ducks all over the place. We have like a mallard, and those things are assholes. You, you, you slam a door hard enough, and a mallard's going to crap everywhere. I digress. But when you look at these coat of arms, this hopefully shows us that we will finally be able to customize coat of arms. And again, I don't know. People were asking in the comment section here and usually paradox will respond to choice comments that they want to so they did not respond to anything about coat of arms and that has probably been the biggest gripe with the whole new create a ruler um mode or or, or ability that was added in after launch was great i'm glad you can randomly have a different coat of arms but i want to be able to create my own so I'd love to see that actually come in with Royal Court. It would make a lot of sense to be tacked onto Royal Court's DLC system. So I, I would, or at least even as part of the free update to add that into the game de facto. Um, so I'd love to see that. And again, a little bit more here, bringing some color to the hardstone walls in your halls. We have some other tapestries that are not simply your coat of arms that you can hang and display in your court. But... Lisa begs the question, how do you get these artifacts? Well, you're going to get these artifacts from inspired visitors to your court. And the way the inspiration system works essentially is that it will only apply to people that are not landed. So essentially what's going to happen is these people will approach your court and they will say, hey, I would like to make uh, an item for you. So you can see right here, uh, Frederick has the weapon inspiration. He wants to forge a dagger. And those will be based off of your stats. And we'll go into that in just a little set, a uh, little bit. But these artifacts upon completion will then enter into your royal court. They can do stuff like you can see here, write a great tome, weave a tapestry, forge a magnificent crown, whatever it is. So again, this only occurs to landless characters because they wanted to make it so that landless characters in the game had a little bit more to do rather than just simply being in your court and then threatening to leave if you didn't want to do anything with them or press any of their claims. You know, like, hey, let's take a look at Frederick here. <clears throat> He's not a great knight. I probably have a better general than him. And he's not good at anything else. So, and he doesn't have any cool uh, inheritance traits. So, and he doesn't have any claims too. So he really doesn't have much position in my court and he'll probably threaten to leave. And it kind of makes you the user go, well, how do I keep this guy? Should I want to keep this guy? Well, this system will at least make it so those people, these kind of nobodies, will have a little bit more presence by being able to create these artifacts for you. And the way this works is realms with a high grandeur will be able to attract inspired characters more frequently than those with low grandeur, granting them a higher chance of receiving skilled craftsmen that will be able to forge an artifact to meet your expectations. So... When you do this, you'll pay them, you'll sponsor them basically, and that you're funding the creation of this artifact. Now, what's cool too is that this artifact will then depend upon their skills. The skill that is relevant depends on the type of artifact they want to make. For example, weapon and the quality is dependent on the character's martial and writing a book on the other hand scales with learning. So as you can see, it's all going to be dependent upon the skills that they have to create the type of artifact that they will. And then moving into this further, after funding an inspiration, it will take some time for the character to create the artifact. And essentially, this is going to play out with a number of dilemmas or situations that you will then influence the quality and creation of this artifact. And you can see, too, that this might cause you some stress, right? Maybe you're just. So it says, absolutely, guards seize that what Frederick needs. 
So again, if a just character is not going to have guards go and just take things, so it's going to cause you a little bit of stress. And you have a bunch of different approaches to this. And you can see the artifact produced through Frederick's weapon inspiration will be of a higher quality. So it depends upon how much money you want to pour into this artifact. What level of grandeur are you at? How do you want to push that grandeur level with these artifacts? And how is that artifact going to affect your playthrough? And the artifact itself will kind of progress through a similar uh, are uh, a system similar to schemes so it has a random chance to <laughs> chance it has a random chance to progress depending on uh what's going on every single month so again just like a uh, um a scheme and it's pretty cool to see how this works out you know at the end here you get this uh this dagger created just for you you know kaiser heinrich's dagger but there are other ways to get artifacts through, through special events i'm hoping through combat like if you make a weapon for someone i hope you can actually like hey you know you killed this individual on the battlefield he had this artifact he was using it you've taken it because it was in his inventory or if imprisoning people gives you the option to ransack their their inventory like hey in lieu of uh, a ransom i want that artifact or or if that gives you some sort of ability to play with the artifact system and the inventory system when it comes to warfare making warfare have a little bit more stakes for both sides and i think of course the ai needs to be balanced with that as well but um I, again i'm really excited to get more information on royal court we still don't know have we don't have any info a release date nothing aside from these developer diaries they said we will be getting some info here at the end of summer and we're just about at that point i know that paradox goes on holiday over summer throughout uh july or june july and part of uh august so i think now they're starting to come back into the office and we should hopefully start to get some fun new information on royal courts but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today if you have any questions by all means go ahead and let me know in the comment section below i don't have all the answers but i'm more than happy to give you any info i ha i can off of the stuff that i have dredged by looking at all of the uh the uh, uh developer diaries here but i do have a cool video coming out too for crusader kings 3 to help you out if you are feeling bored in your campaigns this should help you get some good ideas going to make your next playthrough a little bit more exciting but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today don't forget to comment like and subscribe all that fun action but have a good one and take care